Hello and welcome to Crow Forest Reviews. Spy Kids 2. So the movie opens with an absolutely horrifying 3D rendering of the Troublemaker Studios logo kid before immediately opening proper in the Troublemaker Studio theme park. Which is apparently a thing in this universe. And I hope you came here wanting to see a horrifying costume of that same logo kid, because holy shit, that is terrifying! Um, anyway. After a brief tour of the death traps, I mean rides, the president's daughter ends up getting stuck at the top of one of said rides after overriding the safeties. And so Carmen and Juni are sent in to rescue her, but they end up getting shown up by a couple of new agents in the Spy Kids network. So Carmen and Juni meet up with their rivals at a formal event, wherein their father is about to be sworn in as the new head of the OSS. But at the last minute, their rival's father hacks into the system and makes himself the new leader of the OSS instead because he's just kind of a dick that way. Also, apparently he drugged the wine that all the adults were drinking, so only the kids are awake and able to fight back as the rival father's loyal agents aid him in his attempted coup of the OSS. So, um, so that's a thing. This movie took a turn! Also, the agents of the coup may or may not be robots. They're either robots or they just have metal hats. It's a little unclear. Also, they successfully managed to steal the plot device. So, so there's that. Anyway, enjoy this brief cameo by Floop and his Foogles from the first movie. So Carmen and Juni go into their treehouse and use their spy technology to hack into the OSS mainframe and spy on their rivals as they get their new assignment from their father. Then Carmen swaps hers and Juni's assignments with their rivals so that they will be the ones to retrieve the plot device instead. Then their uncle, either the real one or the fake one, I can't keep up, comes in and gives Carmen and Juni their new gadgets for their new mission. Including this brand new super gadget that he just invented himself called a rubber band. It's a rubber band. Yeah, but it's also the world's greatest gadget. So Carmen and Juni set off on their mission, traveling via submarine to the mysterious island where they've tracked the plot device's location to. But before they're able to safely make landfall, the submarine goes dead, having come in contact with the mysterious island's mysterious electromagnetic field. And so they have to use their emergency flotation device to escape from the submarine. But hey, at least their rivals are in even worse shape. Yeah. <laughs> so Carmen and Juni are adrift, just out of reach of the mysterious island. But fortunately, a sea monster comes along to give them a little push in the right direction. That was awfully nice of it. Also, it turns out that none of their spy gadgets work due to the same electromagnetic interference that wrecked the submarine. So, that's inconvenient. Meanwhile, the rivals manage to get to the island themselves, but of course, they run into the same electromagnetic interference and have to likewise bail out of their submarine with their emergency flotation device. Back with Carmen and Juni, they end up having to climb a mountain in order to escape from some kind of a dinosaur creature, but the mountain turns out to be an active volcano, and they fall in. Whoops. But then, in a surprise twist, they end up floating over a tiny scale model of the same volcano that they just fell into, after having apparently fallen for a total of four hours. And it was all an illusion. Okay, sure. But regardless of the questionable entrance, 
This is actually a really cool sequence. So it turns out that the entire cavern at the center of the volcano has been set up with an exact replica of the island above, even right down to the creatures roaming around on it. And moreover, the tiny creatures' movements on the scale model exactly mirror the real creatures' movements on the real island above. The center point of the volcano provides a gravitational basis which my miniature creatures can line up exactly to their larger clone counterparts. That's pretty cool, if a little nonsensical. Anyway, Carmen and Junie see that their rivals are in trouble on the map, so they go to rescue them. Also, it turns out that the plot device that they've been looking for is really just a larger scale version of the plot device that powers this mysterious island that they're on. It was just a prototype. The real transmuker device is here on this island. And moreover, the rival's father is even now coming to retrieve it, to complete his takeover of the OSS. You said your father's on his way. I think he's coming to pick it up. His kids are apparently not aware of their father's evil plan, but they also don't believe Carmen and Junie when they tell them about it. So Carmen and Junie set off to retrieve the plot device before their rivals can retrieve it for their father. First thing you gotta do is fall into this pit. Oh, good. They're really good at falling into things. So Carmen and Junie have an up-close encounter with this centaur crab creature thing, and in order to escape from it, they have to jump into this giant hole. Which I'm pretty sure was part of their plan anyway, so that's convenient. Also, the cave that they end up in lets them read each other's minds for some reason. I hate me. I can hear your thoughts. What? <gasps> And you can hear mine! So... so there's that. So Junie steals a cursed necklace from a couple of pirates, which he apparently manages to do without thinking, somehow, since Carmen doesn't stop him. So that's impressive. And of course, the pirate skeletons come back to life, and attack Carmen, so Junie has to rescue her by giving the necklace back. Well, that padded this thing out a bit. Also, Carmen gets kidnapped by a pterodactyl during the pirate fight and ends up getting dropped off in the pterodactyl's nest along with Rival Girl. So... that happens. Junie ends up befriending the centaur crab thing by feeding it a protein bar, and then he ends up getting into a fight with Rival Boy, who has likewise made friends with one of the creatures. And then Carmen saves Junie, much to the delight of the pirate skeletons, who are now on their side, question mark? Um, okay? So Carmen and Junie retrieve the plot device, using the all-important rubber bands to do it, somehow, and then Carmen throws the plot device to a flying pig, for some reason. Was that part of the plan? Also, since they've deactivated the plot device, that means that all of their gadgets are once again working. So, that's handy. They retrieve the plot device from the flying pig's nest, once again using the all-important rubber bands to do it, for some reason. Wouldn't that just make it harder to get? Oh, and then their parents and grandparents show up to rescue them, having tracked their locations. And then the kid's fake uncle betrays them to the rival's father, resulting in the most pathetic fight scene ever. Kick his butt! Yeah, kick his butt, yeah! <laughs> Not like this. So Carmen and Junie's father gets his ass kicked. Literally. That's awkward. And then Rival's father activates the plot device. But apparently his daughter reprogrammed the thing to make it explode or something. And then she tells her father that she's going to tell her mother what he's been doing. Just wait till mom finds out you try to take over the world again. No, please, please, please. No, anything but that! And so, the day is saved and the movie ends with one final bit of telepathy between Carmen and Junie. Go ahead, say it. What? I told you so. Wait, they can still do that? I thought they could only do that in the cave! I'm so confused! So that was Spy Kids 2. How was it? That was really good. 
a great follow-up to the first one. Well, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, so until next time, enjoy the preview for In the Attic. model, but it doesn't make any sense. I just, oh, that's weird. You're seeing this, right? Who the hell are you? I'm serious, this isn't fucking funny. Get out of my house! Uh... Back with Carmen and Junie, they end up having to climb to the top of a, of a volcano in order to get away from some kind of a dinosaur creature, and then they fall in. The volcano, not the dinosaur. They do not fall into the dinosaur. This is not Magic School Bus. Actually, come to think of it, Magic School Bus did both of those things. Enjoy this preview for In the Attic. See my movie. See my movie!